Action. Okay, everybody. Our topic is CT guided liver biopsies by Gisela Lozano and Anne Kemp. What is computer tomography or CT? Computer tomography, um, the word homo comes from um, the term meaning, the Greek word meaning part of section. Um, the word, the term CAT scan comes from computer tomography access scans. Uh, CT was actually discovered in the early 1970s by Alan Cormack and Godfrey Hounsfield. Uh, the first CT was done in England October 1st, 1971, and it was of a head. Um, CT actually is the process of creating cross-sectional tomographic planes of the body, and um, the CT scanner actually sends the pulses through the body, and it usually lasts in less than a second. Some of the most common procedures are head, chest, and abdomen. Okay, the body planes. Some of the body planes are the coronal, transverse, and sagittal. Um, the coronal divides the body into anterior and posterior. The transverse is superior and inferior, and the sagittal is the right and left parts. Um, these planes can be moved in any position uh, with the CT scan. And here's a picture of the body planes. If you don't know this picture, you should reevaluate your career. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the components of the CT um, are the gantry, which is the part that houses the tube, the cooling system, and the detector assembly, and the data acquisition center system, I'm sorry, and the computer, and the operator console, and the patient table. The gantry, well, here's the actual picture of the CT suite. This is the gantry and the table, the console, and the computer. Um, what happens during CT is the patient lying on the table, and the table slowly moves through the gantry, and the x-rays are taken. Um, this is technologist sets on the console. The table moves in slowly, <coughs> and goes and takes pictures as it goes in and out. Um, to mention one thing, actually, the CT machine is composed of many different, well, there's about at least on average four x-ray tubes inside the CT machine, but more advanced CT machines have more than four x-ray tubes inside of it. So it's not just one tube, that's like we have an x-ray stick. CT has more than x-ray tubes. Okay, the pictures that are taken are thin slices of uh, body parts, and they come out onto the console, as we have mentioned. Uh, the images are transferred to the computer, and this is called imaging reconstruction. So CT basically is done in three steps. You scan the patient, which is the data acquisition. You process the data, which is image reconstruction, and you display the image. So I brought um, a basic CT scan of the abdomen, which is your field class. Which is right here. This is an axial view of the abdomen, which is the same as the transverse view, which you see the top and bottom. It's sliced to the half. Right here, this large organ is the kidney. This is the vertebral column, the spinal cord. These are the kidneys. Um, you can see this right here, the lighter areas, that's the bone, the ribs, that's around the um, abdomen. And this is basically just a general CT scan of the abdomen. <coughs> so there are many different exams that we can do with CT. So the procedure that we chose was liver biopsy. So basically a liver biopsy procedure is a procedure in which a thin needle is inserted into a liver to obtain a tissue sample or um, a liquid sample from the, from the liver that can uh, be abnormal. So reasons for, for performing liver biopsies are to diagnose many liver diseases like hepatomegaly, which is enlargement of the liver, psoriasis, jaundice, Wilson's disease, hepatitis, and mainly for, mainly for suspected uh, tumor masses, or cancerous growths. Biopsies are often performed to uh, identify abnormalities in liver tissues after other procedures have failed to show their results. <coughs> other common reasons for performing this procedure are to check the function of the transport of the liver, an ongoing fever, 
um, abnormal blood tests, and if uh, liver mass is found in the x-ray, ultrasound, or CT scan. Uh, the contraindications. Some of the contraindications uh, to consider before a patient has a liver biopsy is if the patient is taking aspirin, blood thinners, or antiplatelets, the patient should stop for a week prior to the liver biopsy. Um, to lower the patient's chance of bleeding after the surgery. Some of the other contraindications are um, the patient is taking heart medication, pregnant, or recently had pneumonia. The reason that these are contraindications are because any blood thinners or antiplatelet forming medications are going to stop the um, natural process of the body from, stop, um, from forming platelets, which stop bleeding. So if the number one risk for biopsies is hemorrhaging, which is continued bleeding. This is basically the kit that we brought from uh, St. Bernard. Um, the arrow show, this is lidocaine. It's local anesthesia that's used for the procedure. And these are three uh, different tubes that are used for the specimen to collect the sample. And these are different needle sizes. The only thing that's different for, from this um, kit uh, to the ones that we use is the needle. This needle is, is different. We actually brought a different needle, which you know, right now we'll explain that needle. Okay, uh, this is a 19 and a 22 gauge. Um, two of the needles that um, are most commonly used. The 19, well the 20, the 19, and 18 are usually used for collecting fluid, whereas the 14 gauge is um, used for the biopsy tumor. The ones that we brought are 19 gauge and 22 gauge. These are used for the liver. And this picture down here just shows the different um, needle and the different tissue size that it will um, produce once you move that needle. So you have different sizes for the different sizes of needles. Okay, let's talk about the procedure. Basically, this procedure is not a very complicated procedure. It's not a surgical procedure per se, because it's not as invasive as surgery would be. It's generally about 15 minutes to 30 minutes. Um, how it works is first, the doctor must obtain consent from the patient. Once the patient agrees to the procedure, a surgical sterile field must be created. Uh, once they uh, clean the lower right, they, oh, first the CT scan of the liver will be done. So the doctor will find a, a spot where he will insert the needle where he sees that like, there is some abnormal growth. So he does a CT scan to localize the spot. He can use the CT um, to guide the needle into the lower, between the lower right ribs to obtain the tissue sample. Uh, he will mark that spot and he will use CT to Keep putting the needle inside. Once this, uh, the needle is inside, he will use. Uh, he will have to localize the tip of the needle to make sure that no other organs are damaged when the needle goes in. He will aspirate the tissue sample and collect it at that point. So the scans that he does with CT are axial scans. Again, they're like transfer scans, and I'll show you examples of them right now. Um, after the, the tissue. The sample is collected, it'll be about an average 1.5 centimeters in length. And the samples you obtain can be put into the test tubes or onto slides. Okay, so that's where I brought I brought images of this actual exam here. So over here is just the CT axial skin. Before the two the needles inserted, right here you can start seeing the needle going into the liver and it progresses until we remove the tissue. And I have a video that kind of shows this 